In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a seed box. And we're going to use the transmission torrent software for this. And we're going to use Ubuntu. Now the pros of doing it this way is that we can manage all of our torrents through a web interface. And the fact they're on a server, it means it's up and running 100% of the time. We also have the advantage that we have super fast internet connection to the server. So our downloads will download as fast as our internet connection will allow. So before we get started, you do need a server and you need to have Ubuntu installed and done an initial server setup. But if you don't know how to do this, don't worry. If you head over to my channel, I've got videos already uploaded showing you the steps that you need to take. So I'm using DigitalOcean. So this video here will show you how to get up and running with a server on DigitalOcean. And then the next thing you need to do is follow my Ubuntu initial server setup. So this will set things up like a user and a firewall. So once you have that in place, come back to this video and we can get started. The first thing we need to do is actually SSH into our server using the user that we set up in the Ubuntu server setup. So to do that, it's SSH and then the name of the user you created. In my case, it was just Mark and then at and then the IP address. As you can see, we're now connected into this server. So the first thing we need to do is add the transmissions repositories. And for those who aren't familiar with Linux, what a repository is, you can think of it like an app store. So our server can go out to that app store and say, what software have you got? And then it can also check, are there any updates to the software I currently have installed on my system? And to do this, we do need elevated privileges. So we have to put sudo at the start of our command. And then we want to add a repository. So to do that, it's add hyphen apt hyphen repository. And then what repository do we want to add? We want to add the transmission repository. That's a PPA colon transmission BT forward slash PPA. Now, if you don't want to type these commands out, I will drop them down in the description. But my advice is you do type them out so you'll learn them and you'll learn how to interact with the command line. So now all we do is hit enter. Now we need to enter the password that we created for our user. And we did this in our initial Ubuntu server setup video. And now this is asking us, do we want to add this repository? And we do, so we want to hit enter. And as you can see, after it's added this repository, it's gone out to all our repositories and asked them for an updated list of software. So we can see our newly added repository here. So that means now we should have a list of the software that's in there. So now that we've got that list, we can actually install it. We need to type sudo because we need elevated privileges again to install any kind of software. And we want to do an apt space install. And then what do we want to install? Well, there's three things we need for this to work. We need the transmission CLI, the transmission common, and the transmission daemon. So let's install them. So we want transmission hyphen CLI. And now we could enter install this alone, but what apt allows you to do is pass in multiple bits of software you want to install in one go. And all you need to do there is just hit a space and then type the next bit of software you want. So we've got the CLI and we want transmission hyphen common and then a space again and we want the transmission daemon. So we want transmission hyphen daemon. And then we can just hit enter. Now this is asking do you want to install this software and any of its dependencies? So yes, we want to install it. So there we go, that's actually installed transmission for us and it's actually running. But we need to stop it first and change some settings. So let's stop it, we need elevated privileges for that. So we can do a sudo and then we can do a service. And then what service do we want to interact with? We want to interact with the transmission daemon. And then what do we want to do with this service? Well, we want to stop it. So we just enter and that would have stopped the transmission daemon for us. So the next thing we want to do is edit our settings file for transmission. And to do that, we can just do a sudo, because we need elevated privileges, because we don't have ownership of this settings file. And then I'm just going to open this in nano, but you can open it in whatever editor you like. And then the name of the file. So this is stored under etc forward slash transmission. And as you've probably seen in my other videos, the Linux command line has autocomplete. You can start typing the name of the folder or the file and then you can just hit the tab key. So if I hit tab now, you can see it's auto completed that for me. So it's in etc transmission hyphen daemon. 
and the file is called settings.json. And again, you could have used tab there to do the autocomplete, but that's up to you. So we'll just hit enter. And now we're inside of the settings. Let's just scroll down a bit. And you can see here, these are the options that we want to take a closer look at. So we can see the default port is 991, and that's absolutely fine. We can leave that. And what this means is it only allows certain IP addresses to connect into your transmission client. So you can set this to false if you don't want that, but I recommend we do leave that on and we just put our IP address in. So if you just head over to Google and type in what's my IP address, it'll come up here and give you an IP address. Now I'm actually behind a VPN here, provided by Pure VPN, and I have a link in the description. And if you go with that, then I get a bit of a kickback as an affiliate link. And you can also hide your traffic from your internet provider then. Anyway, we're just going to copy this. And then back in our terminal under our RPC whitelist, if we just come past our local host IP here, and then if we just do a comma and then paste in the IP address. So now our IP address is added to the whitelist so we can connect in and use the client. It's also worth noting here, the username is transmission. And the password here is an encrypted password. It's a SHA1 encryption and the password is transmission. So if you did want to change that, you can just delete everything here in between the two quotes and type in your password. And then the next time this restarts, transmission will hash this using SHA1 for you automatically. But for this, I'm just going to leave the defaults. But the final thing to do is to save this file. And to do that, it's a control and O and then hit enter to save. And then we want to exit out, which is control and X. So now that our IP address is whitelisted, we also need to allow transmission to speak out to the internet through our firewall. So if you remember, we set up uncomplicated firewall in our initial Ubuntu server setup. So as we see in that settings.json file, transmission is used in port 1991. So we need to allow that through our firewall. So we can do a sudo, and we can do a UFW, and we want to allow, and what do we want to allow? We want to allow the port 9091. So we can just enter. And if we just do a sudo UFW status, we can see now from our previous video, we're allowing open SSH, which is how we're connecting. But now we're also allowing access to port 991. And also to maximize the number of seeds that we can connect to, the torrent network also needs access to another port. So we're going to allow that as well. So the same as above, we need sudo. And we're going to do a UFW. And we're going to do an allow. And then we want to allow port 51413. And then we want to allow TCP traffic through on that port. So we can do a forward slash TCP. And then we can just hit enter. And now we can just do a sudo UFW status again. And again, if you've not watched any of the other videos, you can use the up and down arrow keys to cycle through your previous commands. So you don't have to keep typing out the same ones every time you want to run them. So we can just hit enter on this. And you can see we're now allowing TCP traffic through port 51413. And the final thing we want to do is just reload this firewall to make sure all the rules are applied. So we can do a sudo ufw reload we see the firewall is now reloaded so now that we've configured our whitelist and we've also configured our firewall we can bring the transmission daemon back up so again we want to do a sudo and then service and we want to interact with the transmission service so transmission hyphen daemon and what do we want to do we want to start it so we just type start and then hit enter okay now over in our browser let's test this out so we want to go to the IP address of the server and then a colon and then the port number 9091 and then just hit enter. And you see we get a dialog box asking us for a username and password. And that was from our settings file. So if you remember the username was transmission as default. And obviously if you changed it then enter the username you put in. And then same for the password, it's transmission by default and then click sign in. And there we go, you can now see we're connected into transmission running on our server. So if we come down to the bottom here and click this little spanner, this will open our settings. And you can see this is where it's downloading our files to on our server. So it's var, lib, transmission, daemon, downloads. So we can change that if you want. I'm just going to leave it as the default. And I'm going to show you how to link to that directory in a little moment in this video. 
So it's worth noting here the speeds you might want to modify these for the upload. And the upload means sending files from the server out to other people on the torrent network. Now, DigitalOcean, like almost every other provider, has outgoing traffic limits. And once you pass them limits, they'll start charging you per gigabyte. So it can get expensive quickly if you're seeding a popular torrent. So you might want to enable this upload speed and set it to a low amount so you don't upload too much through your server's connection. I'm just going to leave this off for now though. And then one final thing to know, over in network, you can see here the peer listening port is 51413. And that is the port that I was talking about earlier that we enabled through our firewall that allows our torrent client to talk to other clients on the network. So all that's good, we can just close that down. And then the next thing we need to do is add the torrent. Let's test this out. So over in the top left here, we can open torrent. And there's two options here. We can choose a local torrent file, or we can just enter a URL for one. So I'm going to do that. So I'm just going to grab a torrent file. So I'm just going to grab a copy of Ubuntu. So I'm just going to right click this and copy the link address. And then over in here, I can just paste the torrent link URL in and then click upload. And also here, you can change the downloads folder if you want, but like I said before, I'm gonna leave this as a default. I'm just gonna click upload. And you see that adds the torrent, and now it starts downloading. So I'm gonna let this download, and then come back to you in a moment, so I can show you then how to get this file off the server onto your local system. So now that download is complete, we can actually download that now from our server onto our local system. There's a couple of other things we need to do first. So let's jump over into our terminal. So the first thing we need to do is give our user permissions to the downloaded files. So at the moment when the files download, they are owned by the transmission user. So let's give ourselves permissions. So we can do a sudo. And then just like in our setup video, we want a user mod and a hyphen A and a capital G. And then what group do we want to give our user permissions on? Well, we want it on the Debian hyphen transmission group so this is a group that transmission creates when we installed it and then obviously finally we want to give our user mark the permissions on that and again if you called your user something else then obviously you give yourself the permissions and we just hit enter so now we're part of the debian transmission group we will have read permissions on all of our downloads and the final thing i want to do is create a symbolic link to my home directory to the downloads directory and what this is this is like a, just a virtual link it's like a shortcut on your desktop to somewhere else on the system and this just makes accessing our downloads easier and quicker so to do that we want to do a sudo and then we want to run a program called ln which is link and we want to pass it a hyphen s because we want to create a symbolic link so this is a virtual link not a hard link and then what do we want to link and then what do we want to link? Well, we want to link to that default transmission download directory. So that is under var forward slash lib forward slash transmission. And again, we can use tab complete for this. And then it was in a folder called downloads. And then we can do a space. And then where do we want to link this to? Well, we want to link this to our home directory under mark. So it's forward slash home forward slash mark. And again, this is my username that I created for this user. If you've got something else, then obviously your home directory will be named after the user. I want to go to forward slash, and I'm going to call this downloads. And now I'm just going to hit enter. And now that's created a symbolic link. So if you just do an ls now, because we're currently in our home directory, and you see now we have this symbolic link to our downloads. So this just makes things quicker when we're connecting into download. And I'll show you that now in the next step. So I'm going to be using FileZilla to connect in here. Now there are plenty of other clients, but I'm showing you this because it's cross-platform. So this will work on Linux, Mac, and Windows. So it'll be the same process no matter what operating system you're on. If you have a preferred SSH client, then obviously use that. WinSCP is a really good one on Windows if you want to use that instead. That's entirely up to you. I'm just going to show you how to do it on FileZilla. So we want to come up to the top here and open up our site manager. And then we just want to create a new site. I'm just going to give this a name, easy to remember. So torrent seedbox. And then over here for the protocol, we want SFTP 
SSH. And then the host is the IP of our server. So we can just paste that in. And then the port is the default SSH port, which is 22. And then for the login type, we're just going to go with interactive. And then we just need to tell it what user we want. We want our user Mark. And then what this is going to do, this is going to pick up the SSH key on your system and use that to connect. So what we can do, we can try this with connect. And then you just get the standard SSH message. We've not seen this server before. Do we want to trust it? So yes, okay. And as you can see, this is now connecting to our DigitalOcean torrent seed box. And over here, we can see the folder structure of the remote server. And under here, we have our home directory and our home directory for our user, which in my case is Mark. Now, if I just open this, you can see we have that downloads link. And that links us into the transmission download folder. So if I just open this, you can see what that actually does behind the scenes. It links us into var, lib, transmission, daemon, downloads. And you see here, we currently have our download. So this is what we just downloaded. And then the final step we need to do is download this from the remote server to our local system. So we just right click and we click download. So as you can see, that kicks off the download. And it's now downloading our ISO file that we downloaded through torrents to our local machine. And it's doing that over SSH. So that connection is a secure connection and no one can see what it is you're downloading. So you get that bonus of added security. So that completes the tutorial on setting up a seed box and how you can download the files. If you like this video, give it the thumbs up. If there's anything else you'd like to see, leave a comment in the box below. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button to get more notifications on Linux-based videos and other server projects.